from nightmarish two-headed dogs to human Zs and mice with human livers. These are terrifying hybrid animals created by mad scientists. Two-headed dogs go back to ancient Greek mythology, but one Soviet scientist managed to create a two-headed dog in the lab. His name was Vladimir Demikov, and if you want to talk about mad scientists, this guy is the textbook definition. It really is insane some of the stuff this guy did. He was a pioneer when it came to organ transplantation back in the 40s and 50s pushing the boundaries of surgery like no one before him. And he did contribute some good, but he's probably most famous for his less than ethical practices. He didn't just create one two-headed dog, he performed a series of surgeries. His goal was to understand how the body reacts to extreme surgeries. Pretty ambitious, and as you can imagine, the results were pretty disturbing. These dogs often live for only a few hours or days after the surgeries. There are images of these experiments online, and it's disturbing and surreal to look at. Taking one type of dog and attaching its head to another, like an even more twisted version of Sid's cobbled together creations from Toy Story. Only these weren't toys, they were living animals that he was playing with. Again, there was scientific value to some of Demi Cobb's work, but was this ethical? No. He was incredibly cruel, and even at the time, people were disturbed by his work. You've probably heard of ligers, right? This is when you combine a male lion and a female tiger. These things are absolutely massive, and they look like something from a fantasy movie. Unfortunately though, they come with a whole host of health issues. Ligers can grow up to 12 feet long and weigh as much as 900 pounds, which is a lot of body to take care of. That amount of size puts a huge strain on their organs and bones, making it difficult for their bodies to keep up. Many ligers suffer from breathing problems, arthritis, and generally have shorter lifespans than their wild parents. It's really no surprise that ligers don't occur naturally in the wild. They're only bred in captivity for profit or novelty purposes. They are cool to look at, but they don't serve any purpose other than people to gawk at them and just be like, oh, look, it's a liger. Don't see that every day. Okay, this next one is pretty wild and honestly, a little funny sounding. Wolfins. This is where you take a male false killer whale and a female common bottlenose dolphin and combine them. No, false killer whales aren't actually whales, they're a dolphin species, but this still makes for a pretty odd mix. One of the most famous wolfins is Kikimailu, who performed at Sea Life Park in Hawaii for decades. She was born in captivity at the park in 1985 and just died this past summer. These creatures are typically bred in captivity, mainly marine parks again for novelty's sake. It is very rare for wolfins to exist in the wild. False killer whales and dolphins don't usually mix naturally. There is a huge size difference between them. They have different social structures. They're different species, but in captivity, humans make it happen. The result, wolfins often suffer from health problems and shortened lifespans. The first wolfin ever born in captivity was at Tokyo SeaWorld in 1981. He died after just two 200 days. Their mixed genetics can cause all kinds of physical issues and their behaviors can be pretty unpredictable. It's an example of humans tinkering with nature for entertainment and it rarely ends well for the animals involved. Now we've talked a lot about mixing closely related animal species, but what about humans and animals mixed together in some form? Well, these are known as human-animal hybrid chimeras, organisms that have cells from both humans and animals. Think of a pig with human brain cells or a sheep that carries some human DNA, well, that sounds straight up creepy, and this kind of research has some potential benefits though. Scientists have been experimenting with growing human cells inside animals in hopes of growing human organs for transplant. It's kind of creepy to think about again, but it does make sense. This type of research also raises some ethical issues though. How much is too much when it comes to mixing human and animal DNA? In the US, there was a bill called the Human Animal Chimera Prohibition Act, introduced in 2016, which tried to put a stop to the creation of these hybrids. While the bill didn't pass, it's clear that many people are uncomfortable with the idea. But let's just say, if you thought this kind of thing only existed in movies, think again. Now let's talk about human Z's. What is a human Z, you ask? Well, it's exactly 
what it sounds like a human combined with a chimpanzee. We share about 98.8% of our DNA with chimps, so it's not as far-fetched as you might think. Now in 1967, scientists in China allegedly managed to get a chimpanzee pregnant with human DNA in an attempt to create a more advanced chimp. The plan was to create a creature with the brain power of a human and the strength of a chimpanzee. The chimp was said to have carried a human-chimp hybrid for three months before dying. And the story goes that the lab was then destroyed during the Cultural Revolution, so no human Z ever actually came to be. Whether or not this story is true is still debated. But it does raise a lot of questions. What if this hybrid had survived? Could it have been a whole new species? Or is this just an overblown rumor that went viral before the internet even existed? Now it gets even weirder though, with rabbit human hybrids. Yes, this actually is something that 100% happened. In 2003, scientists in Shanghai fused human cells into rabbit eggs in an experiment that resulted in embryos that briefly survived in a lab. The goal was to use these embryos to harvest stem cells for research, but let's be honest, I don't think anyone would have been prepared for what these things would have looked like if they were actually birthed. I don't want to think about what a half human, half rabbit monstrosity would have looked like coming out of that womb, and neither did the scientists, because they didn't allow the embryos to develop past the early stages, but it's entirely possible the experiments involving these hybrids continued in secret. Here's one that's actually a little more practical, mice with human livers. Back in 2010, researchers in California genetically modified mice so that their livers grew to resemble human ones. Why? Well, this was part of an effort to create a more ethical way to study diseases that affect humans, such as hepatitis or malaria. The mice could be used to test treatments for diseases specific to humans, which could lead to new breakthroughs in medicine. Now, in the past, scientists had to use chimps for experiments like this, but with these genetically modified mice, they could study the same diseases without using primates. Now, sure, animal testing is never the best, but this is a huge step in the right direction, reducing the need for testing on animals that are more uh, cognitively superior. So while it might sound weird, this particular hybrid has real world applications that could help save lives. The zonkey is the hybrid offspring of a male zebra and a female donkey. Sounds like something from a Dr. Seuss book, but these hybrids are real, and there are lots of different variations. You have zorses or sea donks, depending on whether a horse or a donkey is involved. Now, while these things are undeniably adorable, the creation of zonkeys does raise some ethical concerns. One of the main issues is that these hybrids are usually sterile, they can't reproduce, which begs the question, what's the point in making them then? Well, once again, these are a novelty and not really much more. On top of that, hybrids like the zonkey tend to have health problems because of the genetic traits they inherit from their parents. Breeding these animals for entertainment or profit rather than a meaningful purpose just feels kind of wrong. We've talked about mice with human livers earlier. Now we're moving on to mice with human brains. In 2014, scientists took things another step further by inserting millions of human brain cells into lab mice. The results were pretty nuts. After about a year, the mice's brains were almost entirely made up of human cells. Now, before you start imagining these mice taking over the world or doing calculus or performing Shakespearean monologues, let me clarify, that didn't happen. Hate to burst your bubble, but it did not happen. But the mice did show improved memory. In one experiment, scientists would play a certain sound and then shock the mice. The human brain mice remembered the sound, shock connection, and braced for the oncoming shock while the regular mice didn't. Now, that is pretty incredible, showing how human brain cells can improve cognitive function. There's still a moral dilemma here, though. Should we be creating animals with human-like brains? I mean, I don't know about you, but if these mice ever escaped the lab and started reproducing, uh, I'd be pretty scared because we'd have extra intelligent mice to deal with. It's hard enough having mice sneak into your home as is, but hey, at least they weren't doing this with monkeys or apes. Finally, we have human brain cells being inserted into monkeys. About five years ago, Chinese scientists created chimeric embryos that contained both human and monkey cells. The goal here was to study brain development and neurological diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. By inserting human brain cells into monkeys, scientists could study how these cells develop and interact in a living organism. Pretty cool, and it's research that could really help us in dealing with diseases like this, but how much is too much when it comes to crossing the line between human and animals? Are we messing with things that we shouldn't be? Does this have the potential to get out of hand? I mean, if you think extra smart mice would be bad, 
No one wants to wake up in a world where monkeys have the same brain power as humans. All that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.